In 1909, Mr and Mrs Philip York were living at Irving with their two sons, Simon and Philip. They were the fifth generation of Yorks to live here. At this time, Erthig would not have been considered a large house, and certainly not a luxurious one. It did not have electricity, nor even a bathroom. But what it did have was a large staff of servants. The responsibility for supervising the twelve indoor servants was divided between the housekeeper and the butler. The nursery, that inseparable part of below-stairs life, was in the care of the nanny. With its own chapel, forge, sawmill and carpenter's shop, its stable and gardens, Erthig was a self-sufficient community. And on an ordinary day in March 1909, we can follow the servants as they play their part in the running of this Edwardian household. Good morning, Edie. Good morning, Bessie. Oh, lovely. Out, my girl. Oh, go on with you, Frank, and go and lay the table.
Good morning, madam. Good morning, Wilson. Mrs. Brown. Could we discuss tonight's dinner first? Well, madam, Gillam tells me we're coming to the end of the carrots and leeks. So for tonight, carrot soup, fillets of sole, and we have the very nice home-killed beef. Morning, Annie. How are you keeping? Oh, very well, thank you, Mr. Gillam. Turnips and uh, some carrots. Mm. Well, I don't think much of those. But they're the pick of the crop, Mrs. Davis. Well, it's a good job we're having carrot soup tonight. But I need some more of them anyway. I might uh, tell one of the lads to bring some up. Good day, Mrs. Davis. Hello. Making any difference at all. Well, it ought to be. Have you had instructions? Of course I have. A little harder. York is arriving by train later this evening, so that will be Mr. York and Mrs. York for dinner. Yes, Mr. Wooden. So I think, love it, we will have the uh, the victory cup and the uh, small candlesticks. Yes, Mr. Wooden. Mm. She got a letter this morning from my brother John. I couldn't believe it myself. Is it still saving up to come here? I don't know how long it will take him though. Mm. Why do you try and get in a position in this well, house? It's not a job like that. He wants to work in a factory. Oh, there's more money in it. Mm. You're right then. Good 
Morning, Joseph. Morning, Ernest. Could I show you the horse sometime today? Uh, yes, sir, may I have it uh, after dinner? Yes, that'll do fine. Yep. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Jones. Good morning. Is it all right if Philip pats her? Yes, it is. Find your fingers, Ooh, that's it. Let's bite you. Pat right, her a bit higher up. That's it. A bit higher up, that's it. Oh, she likes you, see? Because yeah. he's my horse. That's right. Yeah. And what's wrong with this? The chimney's missing. So it is. I could make a new one for that. And I could make a new piece for this tender as well. I think if you came back tomorrow morning, it would probably be finished. Thank you very much. Morning, Ernest. Backing out, Mr. Jones. Don't help James in the tap room. George, when you finish that bed, I want you to take some more carrots down to Mrs. Davies in the kitchen. Oh, I must have got them. <laughs> Have you got any white thread, Edie? Quite. Mm -hmm. yeah, try that. Oh, thanks. Lovely. What have you done there? My hem. I tripped up this morning. I hate hemming. Do you? I don't mind it. Have you got a great pile? No, no, that's all. Right. Are you ready? Yes. 
Welcome. Welcome. Oh, we're going to go down the stage drive. You too. When you clear that engine, I want you to get off and sweep the leaves away from the rose garden. Gillum. Good afternoon, Mrs. York. I want to talk about flowers for Friday. Uh, well, I hope we shall have uh, plenty of daffodils, uh, some freesias, and with any luck, the tuber roses will be ready for Friday. Very good, Gillum. Get on with your work, you two. Jones, fetch the, um, the victory gun. Continue with the table, love it. Thank you, Nanny. What is the name of your new pony, Philip? Dinky. And did you ride him this afternoon? I did. Really? Which pony did you ride, Simon? Guppy. How far did you go? Then I was going faster and faster. I see. Yes, on the ground. Mm -hmm. When they got shoes underneath. and arms for a pint, Bob. You coming? No, I'd better stay and get this engine going. I'll follow you down later. Right you are. Good evening, sir. Evening, Wooden. Mr. York's bath is ready, Mr. Wooden. It's your bedtime now. Please, shall I finish my book quickly? No, I don't think so, because if you come quickly, maybe your father will come and say goodnight to you. I'm just about to do that. Very 
Well, Jones, you may light the candles. Brought the soup out, Mr. Wooden. Good. I believe he's doing very well. Mm, I meant to ask him. Dinner is served, madam. Thank you, Wooden. Do you fancy a game of cards tonight? Well, I wouldn't mind, but I'm a bit tired. Oh, go on. You know you always win anyway. All right, then. Just a couple of hands, though. Well, if we hurry up here, we can go straight down. Silver's finished, Mr. Wooden. Good. I'll bring it through to the strong room, and uh, then you can go. Thank you, Mr. Wooden. Ten o'clock, girls. Time you're upstairs. Very well, Mr. Wooden. We're just finishing. All right, Wooden. You can lock up now. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Oh, by the way, Wooden. Sir? I shall be leaving tomorrow morning at ten. Very good, sir. 